And so the main concern is that there's really no power to it. It's more of a decorative item. I'll probably release it along with the files of the furnace, put it in like a separate library of just decorative blocks. Also including some updated light blocks that I make along the way. Now the construction is really simple. It utilizes the cordless DC motor and that just allows it to get as close as the top here as possible. And so it has the wires just connecting foil tape as some contacts that go onto the inside here. And these are contact pads that go down to a battery here. I didn't really understand how these cordless DC motors worked. Before going into how the cordless motor works, it's important to make the distinction between cordless and the more traditional DC motor. The traditional DC motors have a core, which are called the armature. The armature is just a bunch of electromagnets that when hooked up, the polarity on this side will be opposite of the polarity on that side, along with stationary magnets with opposite polarities on each end. And so the traditional motors use the attraction between the opposite polarities of the electromagnet and the permanent magnet in order to move it along, with the commutator switching the polarities as it rotates. The cordless motor utilizes current flowing through a magnetic field in order to get a force, also known as Lorentz force law. The law states that if there's a magnetic field and current runs perpendicular through that magnetic field, then the magnetic field will induce a force on these charge carriers moving upward. And so now here we have Fleming's left hand rule, and on the other hand we have Fleming's right hand rule. Both rules are based on the Lorentz force law, except that the left hand is for motors when a current is applied, and the right hand rule is based on generators. Force is applied in order to induce a current. The forces on each finger stay constant. Pointer fingers remain magnetic force. The middle finger represents current and the thumbs represent the motion. So now having it hooked up to the oscilloscope, if I turn it clockwise, you can see it induces a positive voltage. Now going to the left or counterclockwise creates a negative voltage. Now hooking up to the battery, the positive going to the red wire. It'll spin clockwise. If these wires were flipped, it would go counterclockwise. So here I've drawn up a little diagram to visualize how the current moves and how the direction flips according to Lorentz force law. Here on the top, it's being used as a motor, so current is being supplied. When it runs through the motor, it spins clockwise. Now when using the motor as a generator, we're actually spinning the motor manually, and this will induce a current that is opposite from when we were supplying current. The motor can now be visualized more of a power source. Here you have your positive and here you have your negative. The conventional current will be able to run through the LED and continue the loop. And so this explains for the need of the two separate rules, the right hand rule for generators and the left hand rule for motors. That force created is what makes the windings move and ultimately the shaft rotate when you open it up. On the inside there's magnets and here the actual windings, it's hollow. And at the top you have the commutator bars, which these leads connect to, out into the external wires here. If I use a magnet in order to align the poles and get a mapping of the inside magnets. And so here you can see that I marked one side as red. And on the other side, I marked with the gold. That would indicate that there's two separate magnets here. And so this would be the top down. The north face has a flux that wraps around and goes to the south facing pole here of this magnet. On the inside of the right magnet, there's a north polarity. And on the inside of the left magnet, there's a south polarity. And so it just continues in the circular motion. The main thing to take away from this diagram is that there's a magnetic force perpendicular to the magnet's face. And so since the magnet is curved, then when it's perpendicular, it starts shifting. In order to make this magnetic field more ideal, by having straight perpendicular lines to the faces of the magnets. The motors use a metal housing in order to catch that magnetic flux. So when the metal housing is added, the lines end up being more straight as the flux gets attracted to the metal. So now after finally adjusting this magnetic field, we're able to move on to the actual windings themselves. So here's three designs that I found and I'll be explaining exactly how they work. And if you were to look at it from the other side, this is how it would look. The cordless motor I have most resembles this left design here. 
And so it starts curving out, goes straight down, and then curves to the other side. Now here in this middle winding, the current changes from going down left to down right. The vertical forces will cancel out, but the horizontal forces will stack, leaving with the net force equal to this design on the left. And finally for this design here, the force would be going down left. But on the other side, it will actually be going up left. And so the vertical, again, will cancel out. And so you're left with a net going to the left. By using the left-hand rule, I made a little model here in order to visualize the forces within the coreless motor. So by aligning the magnetic forces, you can see there's a force on the windings going down. And as the windings rotate around the magnetic core, you can see the force starts to curve up until this point here where the magnetic field will switch and now there's a new force on the windings going to the left. In order to counteract this change in motion, the current gets flipped. So now realigning the magnetic force, we have a force on the windings continuing counterclockwise. And so this will continue until there's a split in the magnets. And when there's a split, then the magnetic force flips. And in order to counteract the change in motion, current gets flipped and we're left with a counterclockwise motion again. The flipping of the current is created on the commutator bar. The commutator bar is used in order to change the direction of the current when the magnetic field changes. And the current will change depending on how the voltages are connected. So that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, as always, please let me know. And thank you for watching.